Manu Sher Takin. He's an analyst at the Center for Global Energy Studies and joins me now. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Now, of course, the IEA's ultimate goal is to, is to try and get a, a more balanced, I guess, view, uh, putting extra pressure on OPEC to produce more, but also extra non-OPEC producers to, to put more on their, out there on the market. Is this justified? Are we still at risk of a recession? Do we need more oil out there? Well, the policy of International Energy Agency has been since it was established in 1974 as a country counterpoint to uh, OPEC, OPEC, the producers. So their policy, although they don't always is explicit, is always to give warning, to make sure that the uh, industrialized countries reduce their dependence on importing oil, especially oil from OPEC and Middle East, Saudi Arabia, so basically and encourage sure on energies and so on. So sometimes, if I may be allowed, they exaggerate the risks and demand and, and so on, say we have to have more and more supply, go to other energies, etc. But I think they are a well professional organization and the studies and analyses really are well documented. I don't want to now say that. And so that, that's a very interesting point because you, you don't think, you know, I've always seen them as, as someone who would protect, you know, my interest as a consumer, your interest as a consumer to make sure that you don't overpay. Exactly. Uh, you don't think that there's a risk of actually undersupplying the markets? You think that I there's a think risk so. of recession? I think the, uh, the trends in the next uh, few months definitely and then for the next few years is that the demand is not going to grow, demand for oil and energy, especially oil which is the critical one, is not going to grow as rapidly as people thought in the previous years. You know that uh, recession, the economy is not growing so <laughs> we don't need that much uh, oil and energy fuel for manufacturing, for transportation of goods and services and so on. That really is there. So the trend behind us or behind our minds is that demand is rather going to be weak or growth of demand is not going to come down. Some countries may be down, OECD and so on with the recession. On that hand, supply chain is coming. The companies have been investing, national oil companies around the world. Huge oil reserves have been found. There is a lead time. We have discussed it before, the huge reserves yeah. in Brazil and yeah, so on. But it takes Brazil. time, of course, a few years before they come in the pipeline. So supply is not the thing which changes every other month. It is companies' policies, major investments, and gradually it will come. So I think we will have supply of more oil coming in. And gas, I think we have had growth of gas, but so energy supply is coming. But please. Manager, in, in terms of the oil price, I mean, this is something that, you know, we've talked about before, and it's always debatable because give or take $10, yes. $10 it's quite difficult to predict. But are we going to expect it to, to be stable at this kind of level? Um, it, you know, let's discard the fact that we're going to get a, a recession because we don't know it yet. If we kind of stay in the sluggish, slow growth, how, what kind of level do you see? Well, the expectations are that there would be downward pressure on price. But OPEC countries, as their policy of controlling their level of what they supply to the market, I think they would react mm -hmm. and they might reduce supply. So I think that would mean they would keep the price more at these levels. There's not going to be a collapse in the price of oil in spite of whatever recession because of OPEC policy. That has been in the past, mm -hmm. and the expectations are that that policy will also be for the coming months and next years. Stable prices, that's what we all hope for. Manu Chertakin, thank you so much. Pleasure. From the Center of Global Energy Studies.